These days, chips come with everything. And I'm not talking about potato chips. Just about everything we buy or use includes a microprocessor. And it's only going to get more so as the Internet of Things grows and grows. The production of microchips is centered on Asia, particularly Taiwan. The country had virtually cornered the market in high-end chips to run processing in anything from mobile phones to automobiles. However, geopolitical uncertainty and the supply chain issues associated with the COVID pandemic highlighted the risks of having production centered in one specific region. Europe and the United States felt the issue of importing top-of-the-range microchips must be addressed. There is no digital without chips. That led the US to pass the CHIPS Act in 2022, aiming to strengthen the US semiconductor industry. Its full title is the Creating Helpful Incentives to Produce Semiconductors for America Act, and it is intended to boost manufacturing and enhance US technological leadership. What it's meant to do is incentivize companies to build chip fabrication plants in the U.S. Probably 80 to 90 percent of all chips that are produced are produced outside of the U.S. TSMC produces uh, most of the chips for your phone, certainly for AI, uh, even in PCs, and even Intel uses some TSMC uh, manufacturing. So if something unfortunate happens to Taiwan or, or, or Korea, the world would be in deep trouble. They just wouldn't be able to get the chips. So it's really meant to incentivize companies like Intel, but even TSMC and, and, and Samsung, who are, are making use of this chip act for building out new fabrication facilities here in the U.S. Building a state-of-the-art microchip plant is one of the most expensive pieces of infrastructure to construct. In many countries, government support is needed to fund the investment. A new chip plant can be anywhere from 20 to $40 billion to construct, and the prices are only going up. So uh, plants are built, generally speaking, where companies get incentives to do it. I mean, they're shopping around. They're looking for help. And by the way, other con countries do that as well. The Chinese are, uh, are subsidizing, building out chip fabrication facilities. Taiwan subsidizes. Uh, Europe is starting to go down the same path, although less so. In the past, there were incentives, but they were tax incentives. So if I built a plant and I spend a $40 billion, a, a state, Ohio, for instance, where Intel is building a new facility, would give me some ability to lower my tax rates for some period of time. But that's not the same as actually getting money up front. The Act has allocated more than $52 billion of taxpayer money to incentivize the construction and expansion of semiconductor fabrication plants in the country. It's much more important for companies to get it up front if they can, uh, because then they have to go out and borrow less. And that reduces their, their cost of operations uh, and reduces their loan amounts. You know, they have to pay those out over time. So it's good for the, the chip companies. It's also good for the stockholders. So far, eight major companies have been recipients of cash from the CHIPS Act. Top of the list is Intel, which has been given $8.5 billion to help construct manufacturing plants in Arizona, Oregon, New Mexico and Ohio. Next up is TSMC of Taiwan, which has $6.6 .6 billion for its three advanced chip fabrication plants in Arizona. Samsung has received almost as much as TSMC, with a $6.4 billion handout for its plants in Texas. And rounding out the top recipients is Micron, which has a little over $6.1 billion to help pay for its $100 billion facility in New York. These appear eye-watering figures, but in most cases, they're a bucket in the ocean compared to the total cost of building a state-of-the-art microchip manufacturing facility. It's partly due to the inherent cost of creating a manufacturing environment that is super clean and sterile to build some of the minutest and most intricate components we use in devices. If you buy a high-end phone, the, the chip in that phone is, is leading edge. It's coming from the best factories that you can get. Uh, and so that's what people are trying to build. It's really high-end AI, 
Uh, and and there is clearly some some military need as well. I mean, you know, military uh, technology requires a lot of processing power, and and they're willing to spend to to get that. But a lot of the leading edge stuff, whether it's in your PC or whether it's AI in a data center or you know Amazon cloud stuff or, or you know Azure, Google, or Oracle or IBM or whoever the cloud provider is, those are the kind of chips that are going to be built in the U.S. Look at what TSMC is saying about the three facilities under construction in Arizona. All will produce logic chips to process data and perform instructions in devices. These are the types of chips you will find in your computer's CPU, or more likely the GPU powering AI or crypto mining. The semiconductor industry has developed its miniaturization scale called nanometers for marketing purposes. The smaller the number, the more computational and power efficient the chip. The first TSMC plant online will produce four to five nanometer chips. The next three nanometers and the final online will produce the most advanced two nanometer chips. And they're not cheap hundreds to thousands of dollars per chip, maybe tens of thousands of dollars per chip, not the, uh, you know, the, the chips that you put in at gadgets that cost 50 cents or a dollar or a dollar 50. Those will be still be made overseas somewhere because it's much cheaper for them to do that. According to the U.S. Semiconductor Industry Association, the CHIPS Act has been a catalyst for $450 billion of private investment. However, with a new president on the horizon, it could come to nothing. It's easy for President Trump to say tariffs would be better, but probably not so easy in practice. The problem with that approach is you're going to increase the cost of chips. And tariffs generically are taxes, right? You're putting a tax on the cost of everything. So all the stuff that we buy and what doesn't have a chip in it today is going to go up in cost. The second piece, and I think it's it's not a good decision, is... Tariffs are a penalty, and the CHIP Act is an incentive. Incentives usually work much better and for a longer period of time than tariffs. And the third piece of it is, even if we're more attractive for companies because of tariffs to come in and, and build new uh, factories here, it takes three to four years or, or even longer to build a new, new factory. It takes a long time. If the CHIPS Act were repealed, it would have to be done by Congress. However, there could be a political backlash from President Trump's party as many plants under construction are in Republican states. One of the factors prevalent in legislators' minds when coming up with incentives for chip production in the U.S. has been China's growing strategic importance. The strategic competition with China has certainly been a motivating factor for Washington to do more because of the concerns about national security in China, economic security issues like supply chain, resilience, uh, technology leakage, the loss of American competitiveness in, in certain areas of manufacturing uh, to China, and a lot of the language that members of Congress and the executive have used as they develop these different pieces of legislation and other tools have China squarely in mind. But even leaving aside China, you know, certain areas of the U.S. economy uh, that have become weaker need greater support. However, it's not just about geopolitics. As President Trump kind of admitted, Taiwan and China are where the expertise in producing microchips is centered, not the United States, which is something his administration would like to address. The economic security concerns are paramount, uh, but there's also the question of jobs and rebuilding. America's own manufacturing prowess, which has both economic and national security benefits to it. But the facts are, is, is that you can friend shore onshore some semiconductor manufacturing capacity, but the U.S. right now is around 12 percent. Taiwan's at 60 percent. You've got China and others making up the rest. Even at the pace which the U.S is adding capacity, that 12% number is not going to radically change because everyone else is also adding capacity as fast as possible. We are going to be in a globalized semiconductor industry as far as we can see. However, the United States concerns which led to the CHIPS Act and the incentives to increase microprocessor production are universal. 
The European Union and other countries have instigated similar measures, but maybe not entirely on the same scale. With that may come problems of oversupply. The big question will be whether we've overshot or not and end up with a lot more capacity than we can actually absorb. It's not necessarily that the U.S. will spend too much, but in addition to the United States, there is new FAB capacity being installed in Japan, in South Korea, in China, in the EU, in Brazil, uh, and in, in Taiwan. There are a lot of forecasts about potential demand. Uh, the demand is going to rise because of AI and, and other trends. But nevertheless, the amount of capacity being installed worries me that a significant portion of this will go unused. If so, we will then have wasted a lot of money. We will innovate less. There will be job losses and people will be wondering why we went down this path to begin with. Even before the re-election of Donald Trump, some of the chip makers were ringing alarm bells. TSMC has put back the date it expects to have its third plant up and running by a couple of years, not for a lack of funding, but for a lack of expertise. Staff working in these billion-dollar plants are some of the most technically skilled workforce in the world, and quite frankly, there aren't enough of them. Increased production, not just in the United States, but worldwide, means there will be pressure to staff these new facilities, and the workforce may not be available. Global demand for microchips is expected to double by the decade's end. The high cost of a production facility raises the question of where the money will come from to invest the billions needed to meet the projected demand. It looks increasingly likely that only governments willing to incentivize, as has been the case in Taiwan and China, will be able to reap the rewards of the exponential growth projected. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content. And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.